I'm going to do a video series on the key barriers I've seen in OCD recovery of late. So these are coming out of working with different clients who have had um, maybe a few rounds of exposure and response prevention, possibly other therapies in there, and may still be struggling or have had fairly significant relapses. Um, it's also coming out of my own experience of working on OCD recovery and how to focus on a long-term recovery that's more stable and enduring and um, relates to the development of skills and a different relationship with our mind that is more supportive in the long run. And um, the first one is really about um, seeing people use an ERP, ACT, other therapies with the hope of controlling obsessions and really getting rid of the intrusive thoughts. So really as a control strategy. Um, so the difficult thoughts, the fears, the doubts, the judgment are so troubling to the person that they'll do anything to try and get rid of it and so they approach erp with that agenda you know i'm going to do tons and tons of exposure and these symptoms will go and of course that creates a paradoxical effect in our brain where we are actually trying to push something away and we get more of it a little bit like the annoying song metaphor, where the more you want the annoying song to get out of your head, the more likely it is to stay there and get louder. There's also a second thing that has the paradoxical effect that we end up monitoring our mind. And again, the more we monitor our mind to see the absence of something, the more likely we are to see it. You know, if you tried to monitor your thoughts now and, and said, OK, track for any white elephants in your thought process and as soon as you start to do that you're going to start to see a lot more white elephants so really the pushing away and the monitoring are going to add to um, the difficulty that we're experiencing and hence why um, acceptance is such a useful principle not acceptance of the feared um, reality of the OCD but acceptance of having intrusive thoughts and yeah, you wouldn't choose to have them, but just like a headache, the more we struggle and fight with them, the more we reinforce it and increase it. And really judgment is at the heart of this, the way we judge our thoughts and judge them as being wrong and unwanted and um, difficult to handle and be with. All of that sets us up for um monitoring and suppressing and pushing away and then ultimately the mental compulsions and pot potentially also the physical compulsions so we'll go into more details on all of these topics but that's the first one i'm going to do a, a a longer video on each of them going into more detail and then how to work on it um, the second one is this idea i call secondary spikes so ocd spike means the initial intrusive thoughts that sort of start the OCD episode. Well, secondary spikes. So we apply ERP response prevention skills or we apply ACT skills or other skills to help with that. And then OCD switches form and generates uh, a different type of uncertainty or a higher level of intensity or um, changes form or, or presentation in some way to hook us back into doing the compulsions and uh, we'll, we'll do a, a longer episode talking all about that and the examples of some of those and also I talked about this on OCD Stories podcast so you might want to check that out um, to hear um, us talking about that, that theme there. The next um, key barrier is really the continuation of a lot of mental compulsions often quite subtle sometimes what I call automatic mental compulsions. So they become unconscious and so reinforced that they're just sort of running in the background and very hard to stop. Just like any rumination process, you know, you can catch yourself walking down the road and you're ruminating about an argument you had or a decision you're making or a worry you have. And 
you don't even know you're doing it it's happening on autopilot until you come come uh come to and manage to catch it and really you know what i've found in people who are struggling with ocd is they and they've had a number of rounds of ERP is they often haven't really done a lot of practice and work on the response prevention, the mental compulsions and ways of, of stopping that. Sometimes they've been told just to stop that, you know, stop ruminating or interrupt it with things like saying maybe, maybe not, or worst case scenario, um, sort of statements, agreeing with the OCD, that kind of stuff. And often I found, you know, those techniques can be used skillfully, but often they become part of the mental compulsions. And um, uh, equally, it's in my experience, it's not as simple as just stopping it. Um, you have to train it. You know, our minds are slippery and, you know, everyone is mind wandering 50 to 60 percent of the time is what the research shows. And it's very difficult to be aware of what our minds do and to catch this stuff. So personally, I think we have to train that skill. We can't just assume that everyone has enough clarity to notice very subtle, fast compulsions, stop them, just, you know, drop the, the ruminating immediately. It takes training and practice. Certainly it did for me when I was struggling with OCD in the past. You know, I had no way I could have just stopped ruminating. It was happening all day long, half the time unconsciously. And, you know, I'd stop, try and stop one and it would pop up another way and then another way and then we get secondary spikes and drawn back in and think I wasn't ruminating before you know it you were so without training the skills of observing our mind and getting the ability to diffuse and watch the thoughts uh, more with more precision and more um, clarity it's very hard to stop this and again you know just look at um, anyone in a meditation class really you know, when you start and you're doing something like mindfulness of breathing, um, every time you lose track of the breath, you're ruminating, you're going off into a thought um, uh, pattern, and it may be pleasant, unpleasant or neutral, but you're getting into a repetitive thought pattern, analytical thinking, and you're losing the breath. And then you notice that you drop that and come back. And no one can do that quickly. It takes training. There's no one goes to a meditation class and instantly can just drop that when they know what it is and they practice it and they stay with laser precision on the breath, their mind will just keep going back to the rumination, keep going back to it. And then over many uh, months and sometimes years, you get better at it. So really um, having a way to train that, including mental compulsions around threat monitoring. So when we actually monitor our body sensations or we monitor the external world or our thoughts, um, and learning how to to kind of work with that as a compulsion as well. So really, these these mental compulsions and threat monitoring, um, really for me, they're often sitting below the physical compulsions, the avoidance, the reassurance seeking, the the other things we might be doing in the outside world, the magical um, rituals and um, you know just so behaviors and all kinds of different physical things we might do in the world. Underneath it all, there is often a lot of, of mental compulsion going on and monitoring. Um, the next one's really a, a secondary spike, but I think it's worth emphasizing is just the struggle with feelings and the difficulty accepting intense feelings. And um, sometimes that's related to the intense feelings tr tricking us back into the mental compulsions. You know, suddenly the feeling so strong we go, oh, well, this must be a genuine threat and I must have to tackle it uh, and do my compulsions. And in actual fact, we just need to learn to ride through those waves of emotion more skillfully and, and not believe them just as we have to build a different relationship with the obsessions. And actually obsessions can show up in the body as sensations or feelings. Um, and, and so getting more skilled with that. So learning acceptance skills, um, sometimes, you know, there's fears around um, social anxiety and those feelings uh, being seen by others and being perceived as being embarrassing. And then we avoid stuff because of that it can be health worries within the feelings There can be um, worries that these feelings mean, you know, the feared outcome of OCD. So there can be lots of interaction with with feelings. And again, often the traditional advice is just sit with it, tolerate it 
you know, stop ruminating about it, stop monitoring it. And really, it can be a lot more complex than that. You know, um, uh, we can't generally just you know, be with difficult feelings, you know, look around the people, you know, in your life, can people easily just be with difficult feelings? No, normally people are doing everything they can to push them away and distract themselves and, you know, live life in a way that avoids painful feelings. So really without having a way to train that skill, um, it's very difficult. And that's where ACT has lots of really useful ideas for working on acceptance. Um, Next one is struggling with urge surfing and behavior change. So urge surfing, the the urge to do the, the compulsions, probably physical compulsions, to some degree mental compulsions as well. But the urge is very subtle and fast there. So really um, people trying to resist a compulsion and then the urge is so strong, we give in right away. And what we know with any behavior change as far as I see the research in my own experiences, it's very hard to change habits and change behaviors. You know, you look at people trying healthy lifestyle, you look at people um, trying to break procrastination patterns, other things like that. It's very difficult to make those changes. You know, people don't keep up their New Year's resolutions. Only 30 percent of people do in a lot of the studies you know it's very hard to change behaviors so often this trips us up with um, ocd because it's not easy to resist compulsion so we need some urge surfing skills we need um some tools to help us with that and to practice that and to get better at catching those urges and those urges might also be maladaptive coping behaviors so less compulsive behaviors in ocd but more coping strategies that everyone is doing that are not um uh you know not helpful to us in the long run um so avoidance and food and and substances and excessive distraction and um you know other things we might do in relationship that are, are not helping us so much so we need to learn urge surfing and be honest that behavior changes is difficult and takes time and we often have to slip and recommit and try again um the next one is uh shame really the pervasive nature of shame and ocd that we're either feeling uh guilt and shame about our histories and you know that could relate to our attachment history and and uh, we might have an, a, a stronger sensitivity to guilt and shame we might feel a lot of shame about the the thoughts and the feelings and the symptoms we might feel shame about the compulsions we might feel um shame about having mental health difficulties there's a lot of stigma and judgment out there even you know as the world gets a little bit more accepting there's still a lot of historical stigma and, and judgment and seeing things as signs of weakness so all of this shame can pull us into judgment and self-criticism self-attack and that can merge in with ocd and sometimes you know we are believing because of our thoughts or because of aspects of our history that we are bad and wrong and you know even if i do erp we're not always tackling that part of it that can pull us back into the ocd cycle so really this is the place for self-compassion and you know approaches like compassion focused therapy mindful self-compassion um and you know the way we can integrate compassion approaches into either act or cbt or other modalities for ocd um the next big one is beliefs it's when people have what what we call in act unworkable beliefs so unworkable in the sense that if i let them drive my behavior they don't allow me to pursue my values and to move forward in, in my life in a way that's meaningful and purposeful and you know, we all carry lots of beliefs and often they're not working for us, but we don't always look at them and examine them and then, you know, question the belief. You know, the first step is to identify it and to look at its function and, and workability. And then if we want to change the belief, actually behavior is how we change beliefs 
or we change we might not always be able to change a belief but we can change our relationship with it and how much control it has over us and basically diffuse the belief so that it, it isn't controlling us so that's really identifying beliefs about our mind and thoughts that might be tripping us up in ocd belief about emotions and, and feelings and either what they mean or what i'm capable of of handling uh, beliefs about our sense of self who we are you know that thoughts define us rather than actually the experience in the world as behavior defines people people aren't remembered for the thoughts they have they're remembered for the action they're, they're remembered for the actions and what they did in the world um and that that is people's legacy and that's what you judge when you look around is how people are acting you know in their behavior and everyone has difficult problematic thoughts and you're not judging all of those people the same way you judge yourself so really the these beliefs can be something to identify and to work on another big area is the interaction with core fears and how sitting below the ocd are core fears around um you know vulnerability to threats and danger and ultimately death for self or others and um happiness or unhappiness vulnerability for an unhappy life in the long run for self or others and then a third category that i like to emphasize that really feeds into the other two is is social disconnection and isolation um, which can relate to the evolved um, fears that we have about being an isolated human on their own or unhappiness in the you know social connections often the key thing that um uh, people find most meaningful so we, we're so worried for our unhappiness to be uh, rejected um so really not kind of tackling those core fears with exposure work or with compassion work or ideally with both um finally is the systemic and historical issues that might be feeding in so systemic issues around current stresses um, if i'm overworking if i'm um focused on others in a pathological giving way rather than a reciprocal giving or a balanced um way you know we might be in relationships that are, are toxic with um narcissistic abusive um uh, shaming people or invalidating or dismissive people avoidant people um there could be historical uh big t trauma so difficult real intense difficulties in the past a smaller relational trauma um you know different combinations of that and you know poverty and um oppression and bullying and you know other other um you know marginalization and judgment for the the person we are and the life we live um you know so all of these things can feed in and be extra stresses within the system and um sometimes the stress of being in those difficult relationships and unable to express things or move away or resolve them you know feed into the ocd system and then amplify um the the anxiety symptoms and other symptoms so you know really sometimes we have to look a lot at those systemic issues otherwise it's going to be very hard to tackle you know the ocd more directly um so these are uh, the key barriers that i'm seeing for people a lot these days we're going to go into each of them in an extended video um, and talk about how we might um, frame and understand them more deeply and then ultimately how to work on them 